talking up as we get started. So, as you know, I'm taking the summer off. I'm going to the, uh, the Bahamas for the summer. <laughs> so you guys can run the show. Missionary man. trip? No. Go to the <laughs> no, that would be right. Myrtle Beach. Raising oh. money. <laughs> Raising money. Kind of witnessed the Mrs. Golf and her 18 sisters. So. <laughs> <laughs> we have Brother Bird going to do Sunday uh, school for June, and then a lot of the boys in between. And Guido will take August, like mid August through Labor Day. So, be a good opportunity to hear some other people preach and teach the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And uh, I need to hear it too. Mm -hmm. Preachers need to get preached at too. And preachers need to hear the Word of God. And you need to hear the Word of God from as many sources as you can. Mm -hmm. Right divided, cross plate, belt by. So, but the first part. Yeah, super, super lap dog. <laughs> Brother Bird, fire it up, man. Here we go. All right. Uh, open the Bible to Philemon. Where's that? Yeah. Open the Bible in Hebrews. And then find Hebrews, turn back the page. I thought it was Philemon Young. Yeah. What's that? I thought it was pronounced Philemon Young. It oh. is. Something like that. <laughs> Alright, let's open the prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the opportunity to teach it. Lord, help uh, be not just head knowledge, Lord, but in fact our hearts. Thank you. Fill me with your spirit. Lord, I help you not say anything stupid, but not say what you have to say. Many that are still traveling, either now or uh, for the next hour. Next hour, Lord, I pray that you give our travel mercy from Jesus. Amen. Amen. Alright, so I don't know if I'll finish Philemon today or not, but we'll see how far we get. And we're not done with continuing on with it next week. Yeah. Uh, so we'll just read the book and then we'll go back. Uh, when, if I was teaching through Psalms, I wouldn't read the whole book first. But <laughs> <laughs> since this one has 25 verses and 430 words, uh, we'll read it. The Bible says, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, unto Philemon, our dearly beloved and fellow laborer, and to our beloved Aphia and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in thy house, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayers, hearing of thy love and faith which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus and toward all saints, that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. For we have great joy and consolation in thy love because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by, by thee, brother. Wherefore, though I might be much bold in Christ to enjoin thee that which is convenient, yet for love's sake I rather beseech thee, being such an one in Paul, as Paul the aged, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. I beseech thee for my son Onesimus, whom I have begotten in my bonds, which in time past was to thee unprofitable, but now profitable to thee and to me. Whom I have sent again, thou therefore receive him, that is, mine own bowels, whom I would have retained with me, that in thy stead he might have ministered unto me in the bonds of the gospel. But without thy mind would I do nothing, that thy benefit should not be as, it, uh, be as it were of necessity, but willingly. For perhaps he therefore departed for a season, that thou shouldest receive him forever, not now as a servant, but above a servant, a brother beloved especially to me, but how much more unto thee, both in the flesh and in the Lord. If thou count me therefore a partner, receive him as myself. If he hath wronged thee, or oweth thee aught, put that on mine account. I, Paul, have uh, written it with mine own hand, I will repay it. Albeit I do not say to thee how thou owest unto me, even thine own self besides. Yea, brother, let me have joy of thee in the Lord. Refresh my bowels in the Lord, having confidence in thy Obedience I wrote unto thee, knowing that thou wilt also do more than I say. But withal prepare me also a lodging, for I trust that through your prayers I shall be given unto you. Therefore, uh, there salute thee Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in, Je in Christ Jesus, Marcus, Aristarchus, Demas, Lucas, my fellow laborers. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. So Isaiah, uh, excuse me, Philemon is the 57th book in your Bible. If you look at Isaiah 57, because um, keep in mind that every book in the Bible, all 66 books, have something that quotes in the corresponding chapter in Isaiah. So Isaiah gives you a layout of your Bible. Um, 
So Isaiah has things, Isaiah 1 has things for Genesis, Isaiah 2 for Exodus, Isaiah 3 for Leviticus, and so on. What's interesting uh, in another way is, uh, you know, when in the early part of Acts and in the Gospels, they're preaching the Gospel of the Kingdom. Israel's being offered the Kingdom. If they had, I don't know exactly how it would have played out, but if they had accepted him as their Messiah, uh, it seems like we would have gone straight from Acts 7 or so, maybe 8 and 9, uh, but certainly with the stoning of Stephen, if they don't stone him and they repent, it seems like we just go to Hebrews and go right on out. Uh, but they didn't, and so we went the way we went. Well, it's the same thing. God laid out the Bible uh, two different ways, uh, or uh, the book of Isaiah to match two different ways. Uh, the, book, the, the, the books of the Bible are not in chronological order, as you know. Job is the oldest book in the Bible, but they're in a they're in a dispensational order. The way God wants you to be able to see how He's working through time, and so as I said, Isaiah sixty six matches Revelation. Well, our our Old Testament goes, as you know, from Genesis to Malachi, those thirty nine books. A Hebrew Old Testament that the Jews used have the same books, yeah. but they go in a different order. They go from Genesis to Second Chronicles. So had things gone differently, I don't know how that would have all played out, but it's interesting that chapters 1 through 39 mm -hmm. match Genesis to Malachi, but they also have things in them that match Genesis to Second Chronicles mm -hmm. in the order of a Hebrew Bible. So God's got it worked out where no matter what happens, he, he does, his plan doesn't get messed up. Uh, you know, I, I've heard Calvinists, I don't run into Calvinists much anymore, but I, yeah. years ago I used to see them all the time. And I just, it's funny how just certain parts of your life God brings, yeah. all, right, all the tongue speakers show up, you know, and all the Calvinists show up, you know. Now I'm just plagued by all the uh, people that say you're going through tribulation. Um, yeah. But uh, they, they would say, what they say, what am I talking about? <laughs> Calvinist. Calvinist. Yeah, no, but why? <laughs> the people you run into, different doctrinal, you know, fools, different uh, times of your life. Uh, uh, tribulation. In the book of the Bible. Another Another brain still died. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> that, that pulp has a way of turning everybody. Yeah, let me give you a humble. All right, so <laughs> if it comes back to me. God, hey, man, even genius is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was thinking about that. I was thinking about that because in ancient Greece, a, a genius was a, a demon. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> oh, give me one second. <laughs> Maybe this is one of those things where, you know, I pray God don't let me say anything stupid. So he's blocking me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No idea. Anyway, I say 57. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. So God's God's they would say if 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 God gave man a free choice, he wouldn't be sovereign. They love that word sovereign. Mm -hmm. The word's okay, it's just way over you. Uh, and they'd say he's not in control. And you're you are you're limiting God. And I'm like, no, actually you're limiting God because my God's so powerful. He can give That's eight correct. to ten or twelve billion people, however many have lived on this earth, free choice and doesn't even mess That's up right. his plan. Amen. So when he, he laid out the Bible, no matter how God man goes, uh, his plan doesn't uh, get get destroyed or, or uh, he allowed Satan to t and man to temporarily interrupt his plans. And what did he do? He turned it around. So that in the end, he's going to have more glory, and it'll be more glorious as a result, and we'll love him more because of the redemption and things like that. But in Isaiah 57, in verse 2, so you got Philemon, and probably should a bit of keep a mark in Philemon, maybe I should have done it myself. Yeah. All right. So in Isaiah 57, verse 2, the Bible says, He shall enter into peace. Verse 19. I create the fruit of the lips, peace, peace, to him that is far off and to him that is near, saith the Lord, and I will heal him. Verse 21, there is no peace, saith the Lord God to the wicked. In Philemon 3, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And then Isaiah 57, verse 12, I will declare thy righteousness, thy works, 
for they shall not profit thee. Verse 17, for the iniquity of his covetous was I wroth, covetousness was I wroth, and smote him, I hid me, and was wroth, and he went forwardly, on forwardly in the way of his heart. I have seen his ways, and will heal him. I will lead him also, and restore comforts unto him and to his mourners. I create the fruit of lips. Peace, peace to him that is afar off. Uh, and so God takes someone who was wicked and someone was wroth and someone who's uh, needing comfort and he restores them and heals them. And in Philemon, uh, verses 10 to 13, I beseech thee for my son Onesimus, whom I have begotten in my bonds, which in time past was to thee unprofitable, but now profitable to thee and to me, whom I have sent again thou Therefore receive him, that is, mine own bowels, whom I would have retained with me, that in thy stead he might have ministered unto me in the bonds of the gospel. So he restores them. Him. Also, you have uh, God reviving uh, people throughout Isaiah 57 and refreshing people in, in Philemon. And, of course, you know, there's 67 books that are inspired in your Bible, 66 in the AB, 1611, and one in the Noah Webster, 1828. Um, uh, if you're listening, uh, blind, yes, on, that, that is a joke. <laughs> I'm not very funny, so I have to explain it was a joke. <laughs> um, but when it, it talks, of, it, when you look up revive, it talks about refreshing someone. When you look up refreshing, Oddly enough, it talks about reviving their spirit and things like that. Yeah. And so Philemon talks about refreshing uh, people, and Isaiah 57 talks about uh, reviving them. So in the book, we just read the, the book. It's written by Paul. He is in prison, in prison at the time. Uh, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ. And later it talks about, in verse 10, I have begotten in my bonds. So Onesimus uh, is a runaway slave. Uh, servant, but a bond servant. So the Bible doesn't call him a slave. The Bible only uses the word slave twice. Uh, but he's a, he, in, he is in bondage as a servant. Uh, and he runs away. Philemon is his master. And I don't know if he was arrested for, end up in prison for running away or for things that he stole or for some other things he did along the way. But somehow in prison, he runs into Paul. Paul leads him to Jesus Christ. And he, um, instead of just you know, putting him on the underground railway, he's gonna send him back. I'm sorry, a bunch of cleanings in the, in the bowl, but that's like a whole box up there. Oh, okay, great, thank you, pardon me. Um, <laughs> Excuse me, <laughs> so he's going to send him back and he sends this letter to Philemon saying hey God had a hand in this maybe God let this happen so that he could return to you and be more profitable not now just as a servant but above a servant a brother to love and he goes in and writes a letter and Paul says hey if he owes you anything put that on my account and uh, give some instructions along the way. So that's what's going on here. And it says that he's a prisoner of Jesus Christ and Timothy, our brother unto Philemon, our dearly beloved and fellow laborer. Uh, so Philemon's a good guy. The church is in his house, we saw in verse two. Uh, he's a fellow laborer uh, with Paul and He has these other guys with him, Aphia and Archippus, their fellow soldiers. So in this passage, you have fellow laborers and you have fellow soldiers. In the Bible, you have fellow servants, uh, fellow prisoners, and fellow soldiers. Now, sometimes, some people, I, you know, I, it's not, I wouldn't fight over it. Uh, some people say Paul went to prison once. Some people say he went twice, some people three times. Uh, he was locked up many times in prison, you know, he, uh, 
But in this case, he seems to get out. This is written before the book of Colossians, as we'll see. Uh, but he seems to get out because, number one, he promises to uh, pay back anything Onesimus owes Philemon. And number two, he says that in verse 22, but with all prepare me also a lodging, for I trust that through your prayers I shall be given unto you. He could be wrong except for the fact that the Holy Spirit, it's not just a letter, the Holy Spirit is inspiring what to write, and so the Holy Spirit trusts he's going to be, be with them again as well. All right. So a fellow laborer uh, shows up in verse 1, obviously, and in verse 4, Marcus Aristarchus, excuse me, in verse 24, Merit, Marcus, Aristarchus, Demas, Lucas, which is Luke, my fellow laborers. Um, go over to Philippians 2. Uh, when you're reading Epaphros, Epaphros and Epaphroditus, a lot of people think that's the same person. I don't know, but I don't have a problem with it. They certainly both matches. They're both around. Paul says similar things about them. And you see that often. Uh, Timothy is Timotheus. Silas is uh, Silvanus. So Epaphros and Epaphroditus. I mean, keep in mind, they're traveling around. They're going. The empire has many languages. And so the names come out a little bit differently. No, I'm Bert, but, or Herbert. In French, it's Hebert or Bert. So, I can't find Philippians. General Electric Power Company. <laughs> All right, Philippians chapter 2, verse 25, the Bible says, Yet I suppose it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, and my brother, and companion in labor, and fellow soldier. So he's a companion in labor, like a fellow laborer, and fellow soldier. Mm -hmm. But your messenger, but your messenger, and he that ministered to my wants. Colossians chapter 1. After using General Electric Power Company for years to remember the order of Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, some idiot, I mean, some brother came up to me one day and said, you know, General Electric's not a power company. Oh, shut up. <laughs> you know? I, I didn't need to know that. I was content. <laughs> Oh boy, what's the end of sense? Verse, verse three. Is it waffles? Uh, Colossians one, verse three. We yeah. give thanks to God. Now, now how you feel? I, I was content just to read the verse before, but now I got to read the whole sentence. <laughs> but now I feel convicted if I don't. Right. <laughs> we, we give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus, and of the love which ye have to all the saints. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of the gospel, truth of the gospel, which is coming to you as it is in all the world. So our gospel went into all the world mm -hmm. back in the first century. So therefore it's not the gospel of the kingdom because that hasn't happened yet. Mm -hmm. And bringeth forth fruit as it doth also in you since the day ye heard of it and knew the grace of God in truth. Verse 7. As ye also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is your faithful minister, of Christ, who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit. So he is a fellow servant. Yes. All right. So you have fellow laborers, fellow soldiers, and fellow servants. And if you're going to be a servant, uh, a so fellow soldier, you need to be a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And then you get the instruction to endure hardness and those type of things, like it's like Timothy two and other places. And um, and these guys. I mean, these guys went through them. These guys are their fellow prisoners. So mm -hmm. they're, you know, they got arrested for street preaching or yeah. whatever they're mm -hmm. doing, and they didn't bail. I know Demas later bails. Uh, but Demas is one of the fellow prisoners here, 
in Philemon, verse 23 and 24. I mean, Demas tends to end up being a pretty good guy. Well, not end up, but goes away as being a good guy. And at the end, you know, he failed. Uh, instead, hopefully he got back right, finished his course. God doesn't tell us. Uh, it, could well, it could well be that that's how he ended. Or it could be God didn't tell us the rest because he wanted us to have Example and samples of each. Paul finished his course, and Demas did. Right? Um, if he did, how would like how would like to go through eternity? Not only did you not finishing is bad enough. God puts you in the Bible for all eternity that you didn't finish. You know, that's uh, that's it. Wow. All right. So uh, he says, "Grace to you and peace from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ." Uh, there is no grace. You can't get peace until you get grace. All the way through in Paul's writings, you see grace and peace. Sometimes grace and mercy and peace. But grace is always there and then peace. Because you can't have peace with God or the peace of God until God's grace reaches out to you. Uh, and God's grace does find you. Uh, it's a little different than the Old Testament. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Why? Because he was a just man. You were not a just man when grace found you. God sent his grace to you. Amen. So yes, there was grace. There is grace there, but it's different. Uh, kind of like uh, Abraham believed God and, and it was counted to him for righteousness. When you believed God, it wasn't counted to him, you for righteousness. Uh, he reached out, gave you the ability to believe, not in the Calvinist sense where he only gives it to certain people, but it, it he offers that gift to everybody you believe, and you don't, that doesn't, you don't get your, God doesn't say, oh, well, that's a righteous act on their, on their part. He takes Christ's righteousness and, and applies it to you. Um, and so those things are different, but it's always grace to you and peace. And it's from, all through Paul's writings, it's from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Darren, if you're watching, I, I, I got to make sure I keep emphasizing in Paul's writings. Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but notice, notice, he typically doesn't say the Holy Spirit. Well, that's because he's already sent the Comforter to you. In this age, we have an indwelling Holy Spirit. You get saved, and he's never going to leave you nor forsake you. He's received you until the day of redemption. So I know that I know there's a Trinity, and I, I know Christ dwells in you, and I don't have all that sorted out. But in a sense, Christ left, went to the Father, and sent the Comforter. So Grace and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit's already with you, giving you that, okay, as the comforter. I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayers. Talk about praying without ceasing. Uh, examples and examples here. Praying for them. Uh, kind of self-explanatory, but how much time, and don't answer out loud, uh, but how much time do you spend Praying for the people in this room. Amen. Um, I, I'll put a joking aside and say, and how much more so for pastor? Um, what about people you may have led to the Lord? What about people you have helped along the way? Uh, you know, you should, God says you pray for all men. I get that, but there are certain people that God's put in your path Amen. that you should be praying specifically for. Yeah. And He's praying always in my prayers, and then hearing of thy love and faith, which thou hast of the Lord Jesus, and toward all saints, reminds me of 3 John, where uh, the Bible says, I, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Very similar here. Um, that's why he's thanking God in verse 4. Uh, he, yes, he prays for them, but he thanks God for them. Why? Because he's hearing of the love and faith they have for the Lord and for other people. You know it when you hear some, uh, somebody, especially if you had a part in their in their spiritual growth or their salvation or anything. I know God saves you, but, but God allowed you to have a part, allowed you to witness to them, plant water, be the one that actually be talking to them when they got saved, whatever it is. Uh, someone you prayed for for years and God let, some, let somebody else come uh, lead them to the Lord. You know how that you're, you're, how thrilling that is, okay? And, and God says, to be thankful for that. And Paul says he thanks God for that. That the communication of thy faith may become effectual 
The communication of your faith. In the Bible, communication is uh, giving someone something they don't have. So it's not just verbal. Right. You can communicate right. money. You can communicate words, verbal. You can communicate shelter. You can communicate knowledge. You can teach them. You just So they are sharing their faith. Their communication of their faith becomes effectual. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so many words, so many words have been ruined, you know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, speaking of words ruined, uh, we're going to get to vowels in a second. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Effectual how? By the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Everything you have that's good is right. because you're in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. You're accepted. Why? Because you're in the beloved. Uh, you know, in, in, uh, when it's talking about the Lord's Supper in 1 Corinthians 11, Sometimes people talk about you being worthy or unworthy of the Lord's Supper. That's not what it says. It says, eateth and drinketh unworthily. Okay? Unworthy would be an adjective describing you. Unworthily is an adverb describing what you're doing. Or modifying it. I think it's the kind of term. Um, it's how they were taking the Lord's Supper and their motive and they just a lot of things about that that get in, in there, but uh, this morning, but it had to do with how they were approaching and not discerning the Lord's body and things like that. It's, if you're waiting to, for you to be worthy, in and of yourself, you're never going to be, and in Christ, you always will be. So in Christ, you are worthy to, to take the Lord's Supper. He commanded you to take the Lord's Supper and do it in remembrance of me, uh, in remembrance of him. Uh, so, he says in verse 7, For we have great joy and consolation in thy love, because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. Okay. So I'm going to go to... Let's see. I'm going to go to 2 Corinthians 6. Brother David, if you go to Genesis 15, um, Estiana, Genesis 43, Ken... Psalm 76. Kathleen, please, Philippians 1 8. And Rio, please, Colossians 3 12. Alright, so 2 Corinthians 2 uh, uh, 6. Uh, 2 Corinthians 6 12. A bowel, uh, you know, we use it today just for intestines. Because, you know, I don't know. I, I, there's so many words that have been corrupted that are key words in the Bible that I just, I'm convinced Satan's behind it. Prove it. <laughs> but I, but I, sorry. <laughs> but I, but I, but I just, I, it just happens so many. I'm not even gonna bring them up because some are ruined to the point where they bring up images that I don't want to bring up. But, but a bowl, a bowel is very similar to the word bowl, right? A hollowed, emptied out space. A bowel is a hollowed, emptied out space in, within the body. It's basically. Anything inside you, it can apply to. It can apply to the heart. It can apply to things real that that are related to the heart of the soul, like emotions and compassion and things like that. So in Corinthians, Second Corinthians six twelve, the Bible says, "You are not straightened in us, but you are straightened in our own bowels." Yeah. Okay. Well, why, why would that be? How can that be? Uh, Brother Dave, please. Uh, Genesis fifteen four. <clears throat> And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, and he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. Okay, thank you. Kind of self-explanatory, came out of their own bowels. So, obviously, it doesn't match the uh, modern-day American usage of it. All right, uh, Genesis 43.30, brother, have that. And Joseph made haste, for his balls did yearn upon his brother, and he sought where to weep, and he entered into his chamber and wept there. Mm -hmm. right, so his balls did yearn to where he's weeping. I mean, that's, that's that. that. That gut feeling, excuse me, that gut wrenching thing where you, you're just overcome with emotion. <coughs> Clearly, that's what, what's going on here. Excuse me, Psalm 71 6. 
By thee have I been holden up from the womb. Thou art he that took me out of thy, my mother's bowels. My praise shall be continually of thee. Okay, so obviously you're in the womb, not in colon or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> we'll talk about another topic first. This is, um, uh, Philippians 1, I have to make <clears throat> For God is my record, how greatly I long after you walk in the bowels of Jesus Christ. Okay. All right. And uh, Colossians 6, what? Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness, mind, meekness, long suffering. Want to keep going? Oh, no, that's fine. Thank you. So, um, if you think about that seat of emotions, compassion, yearning, heartfelt, various uses, it's all just the internal, all internal. Right? You have physical bowels, like I think it's Judas Iscariot, the bowels gushed out, and then went into it. Yeah. Uh, so, physical, anything, any internal organs. Those are physical bowels, heart, lungs, intestine, stomach, lung, liver, whatever. Your soul is a body that looks just is a is a looks just like your body. Uh, the rich man in hell in Luke 16 can see, can hear, can speak, has a tongue, can taste, can feel pain, can thirst. Uh, they could recognize each other even though they're not in the body. So that's why in the old movies you see the picture of you know Casper or Blackbeard's ghost. So Casper's a little different. It's like just a white blob. Like, he goes to the Netherlands or something. Uh, uh, you know, what was that? What was that one that came out with later? Big Hero, Big Heroes, something. Big Hero Six. Casper's his ghost. Uh, the only reason I remember, I never saw Big Hero Six, but they were talking about it at work, where this kid was very athletic, but he was slow. And so I, was, I met him and I was making fun of him. I, I was like, I'm not fast. This is the only line I knew. <laughs> so, but, I don't know how to get off of that. So, he, he, but if you look at all the old movies, a lot of times they look just like the person except you can see through them, right? They're transparent, okay? Uh, in Revelation 6, sir. I can't prove it, but I always thought that when you have that phantom pain after you've had an amputation, it still hurts where you had were amputated because the soul is something that wasn't I, I, Yeah, I can't remember either, but I think the same thing. I mean, you get it, people get itches on their hand, but they can't scratch it because the hand's gone. Uh, yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. The soul, the, the spirit, you can't see the soul, the spirit is like the wind. Uh, well, with with a celebrity that listed, but but the soul, Revelation six, I think it's verse nine. The souls under the altar are given white robes and wear. Um, so the soul has everything that the body has, the physical body. So it has a heart, it has a mind. It has, you know, of course, corresponds to heart and brain, and so on. So spiritually, bowels would be all those seed of emotions, all those things that go along with that. Um, and then obviously physical vows would be just anything internal. And so because of that, it says, because the vows in verse 7, we have great joy and consolation. Consolation, grief in times of, uh, in, uh, comfort in times of grief. Because the vows of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. So this is Philemon. Philemon is someone who is an encourager, someone who, the church is in his house, though, and he has servants, so apparently wealthy, and he uses that not to hoard it and to rely on earthly riches, but to communicate to them in need, as Paul instructed Timothy. And so that Philemon seems to be the epitome of that, and and it, especially if they are in grief, which if you think about all the persecution going on uh, at the time, 
there's probably a lot of grief going on besides just the normal griefs of life. And this guy not only consoles them, it's not just, he doesn't just write a check just to make his conscience feel good. And oh, I've, I've helped someone. He has a genuine love. He says, we have great joy and consolation in thy love. So his love and compassion toward people was refreshing uh, to the saints. And so verse eight, wherefore, wherefore, and remember wherefore and therefore, you look back to see what they're there for. Uh, you know, wherefore, this is why, though I might be much bold to enjoy me that which is convenient, uh, enjoying has the idea of urge, urge somebody to do something, kind of instruct them, but with some, some uh, passion and, and uh, urgency behind it. It can actually be as a strong, strong enough to be a command. So when you instruct, it's not the instruct of, okay, this is how you make an A, this is how you make a B, this is the A sound is that, or A, you know. This is instruct as in giving them instruction of what they need to do. He said, I, I could have done that, though I might be much bold in Christ to enjoy thee, that which is convenient. Um, what's convenient for Paul? People say it means proper. I don't have a problem with that, but the, the more normal way it's used in scripture and in, in everyday language is convenient is what, what, what would be easy for Paul? It'd be a lot easier for Paul to just say, hey, do it. Instead of writing this impassioned letter and kind of reminding them things and, and giving instruction and all that as he does it. Uh, but verse 9, yet for love's sake, I rather beseech thee. That's pretty, pretty interesting. I'm in a position where I could order you to do it, but I'm going to beg you instead. Beseech is very similar to, to beg, okay? Except that God uses the word beseech because it's, like, it's not like a beggar on the street trying to Get, get a morsel. But it's that much of a submitting to someone's will to, when they're asking for something. Okay? So he beseeches them. It's a strong emotional appeal for him to do something. Being such an one as Paul the aged uh, Wednesday night <laughs> the extreme right reverend <laughs> David Brown <laughs> Uh, one of the questions he put out to us was, what are the stages of growth? And I, I have no idea what, there's two times in my life, uh, in 52 years of hearing people preach since I've been saved, there's two times in my life that I wrote down in my Bible, I don't even take notes on a notebook, in my Bible, the points of a message. And here we have Dave Brown, February, 2nd, February 5th, 2006, seven stages of Christian growth. And he's got babe, little children, children, young man, man, elder or father, and aged. And then he's got uh, verses with it and a, and a primary thing that they're responsible for. You know, a, new birth, a newborn is not really responsible for much. They just need to grow and take some milk in. Little children have the, the basics and what it means to be saved. Uh, children, some ministry development, young man, leadership training, ready to reproduce, lead, train others. Um, man, gone through some trials and snares of life. They either make you or break you. Uh, elder or father is a leader, and then the aged is a mentor of leaders, consecrated and has a world vision. And... Paul is the aged one, um, and so, so he's mentoring all these, yep. Timothy, Titus, mm -hmm. Philemon, people like this who are leaders in various churches and within the church itself. And uh, he says, I'd rather beseech thee, being such a one as Paul the aged, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. So there it is again. He's like... It, you know, in other places, he, he's, he praises someone for not being ashamed of his bonds. Mm -hmm. But he, now he's using it not only for, to not be ashamed of it, but a kind of a, hey, I've earned this. Not, not in an arrogant way, but in a, I've proven myself way. Yeah. You, you should give some credence to what I say. In, in uh, Acts 17.11, 
it says the Bereans were more noble than the ones of Thessalonica. Why? In that they yes. listening to Paul, they heard him gladly. But that also says they searched the scriptures right. daily to see if those things were yeah. solved. Yeah. Um, and as Brother Dave pointed out, sometime fairly recently, when we're going through uh, uh, the rapture, maybe that's why the Thessalonians, good reason why the Thessalonians were soon troubled in mind. And we're letting these guys fool them about the resurrection being passed and yeah. when it's the tribulation and where are we going to be in it and all that stuff. Because they didn't do what the Bereans did. They didn't search the scriptures daily. The church of Thessalonica is a really good church. Yes. They have a lot of good things said about them. There's not much bad said about them other than Acts 17 11. You know? Kind of like Samuel's. In 1 Samuel 8 3, it's the only thing that negative thing that's ever said about Samuel. It says that his children walk not in his ways, or his sons walk not in his ways. Okay. Um, this is these are people that Paul says, hey, you should give me some credibility. I'm asking this. I'm one who suffered for the, for the cause of Christ. I'm in prison. And he says, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. I beseech thee for my son, Onesimus, whom I have begotten in my bonds. Look at 1 Corinthians 4. Now I know Jesus said not to call any man father or rabbi. Because one's your father in heaven, even God. One's your master in heaven. Darren, it's because those are in the Gospels. Yes, it is. <laughs> I, you know, I say that facetiously just for fun, but there is some truth to that. Um, it's, God didn't change it anything as far as what you call them. So you still should be calling them Father so-and-so. But in a sense, you lead someone to the Lord, spiritually yes. you are a father. Yep. Okay. In 1 Corinthians 4, verse 15, and the reason I say that for the Gospels, nobody was leading anybody to Christ because nobody was getting uh, regenerated at that time. So Darren, Darren, Darren always he, he calls me hyper hurt and <laughs> calls him Paul only so. First Corinthians 4 verse 15 though, for though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ yet, yet have ye not many fathers for in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel uh, 1 Timothy 1 a couple other verses Shut it down and continue on in Philemon next week Timothy. First Timothy 1, verses 1 and 2. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. Amen. Unto Timothy, my own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse, uh, verse 3. Three and four. As I besought thee, no, that, that's, not, that's right. Sorry. Uh, unto Timothy, my own son in the faith, and then Titus, chapter one. Yeah. Verse four to Titus, my own son, after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. So uh, he leads them to Christ and calls them his son. In Philemon 10, I beseech thee for my son Anesimus, who I have begotten in my bonds. So while he's in prison, he led him to the Lord, which in time past was to thee unprofitable. He was an unprofitable servant, but now profitable to thee and to me. Why? Now he's saved. You shouldn't be the same as you were before. That's right. Uh, whatever your life was before, however unprofitable it was to God or man, it should now become profitable. And if it's not, then ask the Lord to work with you on that and make you profitable. And obviously we grow, hopefully we become more profitable as servants of Jesus Christ over time.
But here he's talking about in time past, when he was without Christ, he was unprofitable, but now profitable to thee and to me. And I know we're in the middle of a sentence, but there's quite a, a, a lot in the next few verses, so we'll, uh, we'll stop there. Uh, but he's sending them back, and we're going to talk about him sending them back as well uh, next week. Any, any questions so far? Thank you, Lord, for this morning. Thank you for all that come and got here safely. I just thank you, Lord, uh, that you would prick our hearts, be profitable unto you, uh, unto your Son, unto the gospel, that we can uh, preach it out with boldness, um, just like Paul did and uh, went to prison for it. Uh, that's um, not in our back of our mind when we're preaching and teaching and trying to. Um, witness for you. I just thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.